John Von Olin. For anyone who knows of him, this name evokes imagery of rhythmic pings on a cracked cymbal in a dark basement jazz club in Cincinnati, Ohio. Energy. Crashes. Bass drum booms. We picture John behind a drum set. Now take a moment and picture him instead on a bench in front of a grand piano, authoring sweet and flowing harmonies which paint a portrait of life that sounds more like it flowed from the pen of an impressionist than from a man who once pounded the heartbeat of the Stan Kenton Orchestra and the Bluest Big Band on cymbals and drums. There was a student, David, I can't think of his last name, the drummer, uh, Kim will know it. Uh, sorry, I, I, I'm terrible with names. But he was a student at the time, and he's a really good drummer. But he, he plays piano, and he, uh, he heard me playing some of these piano pieces just on the side. And he said, you ought to have that recorded, you know. And uh, so he was going to do it originally. It didn't work out. And then Kim took it up. Most of them. Uh, I've got uh, three standards. I've got one, well, school days. I don't know if you'd call that a standard. And then uh, a couple of things by a friend of mine up in Indianapolis. And the rest of them are mine, but they're real short. Uh, a couple of them are full pieces, but most of them are just, you know, I, I wanted to be a writer back when I was young. And, uh, but I didn't want to go through all the stuff you gotta know to be a writer. I was really lazy, you know, intellectually. just as I wrote them back in, you know, 64 or 5. I was really young, you know. But they're, <laughs> like I say, they're not finished pieces of music. I mean, they're just, a, as Kim says, a sound idea. And, and they're really, uh, I told Kim that uh, most piano players will have, like if it says G7 or, I don't have any vocabulary at all. So uh, guys usually have a voicing they use on a simple chord, just a simple chord, you know, I don't have that. So if it comes to a simple chord, I have to figure out how to voice it to a, a, a sound that I hear, you know. Well, it, it's not complicated and my stuff is uh, not uh, avant-garde by any means, it's pretty straight, but uh, uh, I must say it's not to, it's not out of a stock vocabulary of, you know, chords. I've got a book, uh, it's real tattered, uh, from those days when I used to go down to the rehearsal hall in the army, and I'd write uh, one a day, and they're in that book, and that's how I played them, you know. Uh, it's like a couple of them I changed a little bit, but not much. And then, uh, but there's some other things that are current. I mean, current to me. You know, back when I was still writing, I kind of quit doing it uh, because I didn't have a piano. Out at the farm when I used to live out there, I had a nice piano, uh, upright, a big one. And I had it tuned uh, down a whole step, and so it sounded you know, really big, you know. And uh, boy, the voicing sounded great like that. I wrote them all down, uh, most of them paper. So it's not like a, I'm ad-libbing. I'm not ad-libbing anything. It's all written. I think 
like uh, my influence is uh, on piano uh, for chords, not chops or, you know, prowess or anything like that. It was, uh, well, Art Tatum, just as chords, not as prowess, that's for sure. Uh, Art Tatum and, uh, well, Claude Sifflin, who I, I did two, two or three of his things on there. Uh, from Indianapolis. I got a lot of stuff from Steve Ali and Claude Sifflin, those two guys. Boy, they, those two together were, <laughs> they were something else. They, had, they created a harmonies between the two of them that was sublime, you know? And I never heard it anywhere else, not even close. You know, it's not avant-garde, it's not uh, cutting edge, but it's unique in the true sense of the word. <laughs> 